What's up, mate? Let's get gaming! today's face off and we have got some old school courtside basketball action with NBA Jam on the PlayStation 2. Now as usual, we've got two gamers in here today to settle a score. What better place than the face off zone? There is no better place, Daz. Let's meet our first gamer. His name is Luke. Luke, how you doing, mate? I'm alright, thanks. Now, welcome to Gamesville. Um, tell us, what's the problem with you and your mate over there? Well, at lunchtime, he's always like unzipping my bag, stealing my lunch, and I'm like, got my crew the rest of the day. <laughs> stealing your lunch, so he's been working hard, studying hard, goes to get a sarnie and an apple, and uh, it's, they're it's gone, gone, right? Oh, we can't have that. I mean, so you've brought him on games to teach him a lesson. Exactly. And if you win today, there'll be no more lunch stealing, right? Yeah? Is that the deal? Yep. So you ready, bruv? How's ready. your basketball skills, man? They're all right. Yeah? Now, uh, apparently you're familiar with basketball games already, aren't you? Yeah, pretty much. So um, you're, you're pretty much ready for this face-off, yeah? Yeah, I'm just going to, like, beat him really bad. Yeah? Whitewash him. <laughs> Whitewash him. Whoa. All right. The magic word. Well, we've got his mate Josh over here. Josh, welcome to games. How are you doing? Uh, not bad, yeah. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I'm familiar with the basketball games. Obviously, Luke over there is pretty, pretty nifty at them, isn't he? Uh, yeah, I don't play basketball games. No? Nah? I don't play them, no. So, I mean, you know, this is... I mean, to be honest with you, every basketball game is the same. you just got to, you know, try and get your two-pointers in and uh, make sure you block a lot of your shots. So, uh, you up for that? Uh, yeah, all right. Yeah? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not telling you. I'm asking you. Are you up for that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, we are playing three rounds. This is this face-off is divided into three rounds. Each round is one minute thirty long. And mm -hmm. basically, the one with the most points at the end of one minute thirty is the round winner. Now. As we said, this is NBA Jam old school basketball action. I've got to tell you, it is one of the best basketball games out there. Take a look at this. NBA Jam is a classic sporting series. Ported onto all of the early 90s consoles, it soon became known for frantic and funny multiplayer action. This latest update adds an extra player to the original version to make it three on three, but retains the trademark on fire moves and over the top gameplay. All of the current NBA teams are included, but that's where the realism ends. This game is all about fun. Right, we've established the grudge. We've seen a little bit of eye candy. Now I'm ready to get round one on. Right, get your pads in your hand, gentlemen, because the action's about to start. It's three, two, one. Let the games begin! Oh, yeah. right, so we've got Josh. my friend how does that feel feels amazing now you won round one i mean i have to say it was a bit of a dodgy start josh ran down and hit, he hit you with a three pointer straight away put you under pressure but um you kept yourself cool and calm and collected yep. and you nicked it by a point just about you did just about now i have to say it was a very close round so uh, round two maybe a little bit more of a margin yeah yeah i'm down for like 10 10, 10 point margin. Yeah, like <laughs> Don't set yourself up, but you need to win. If you win the next one, mate, you're the champion. Yep. So are you ready for that? I'm ready. Nice one, bro. All right, Josh, unlucky, mate. What can I say? Um, you were shooting from the halfway line. 
Yeah, I know, man. I just uh, lost it, you know, panicking. <laughs> well, you, um, you should have gone for your two pointers. Hopefully, round two. Try and go for more two pointers. They're more consistent and uh, you, you, you build up points better that way, yeah? Yeah. Nice sure. one, mate. Yeah. All right, well, we will be coming back for rounds two and three of this exciting courtside action. But right now, let's cross over for our first review. <laughs> Right, I'm in the console kitchen where we're looking at Total Club Football 2004. Now, this game realistically portrays all of the pressures of the modern game. Find yourself doing well and you could be the next national manager, but do a bad job and you might as well look for another club. Now, if that sounds like your cup of tea, you know what you need to do. Take a peek at this. Total Club Manager 2004 is the latest football management game that gives football fans the chance to prove that they're more skillful than Sven or less forgiving than Fergie. Its key feature is the ability to create a team, import it into the FIFA 2004 and play the League and Cup games. When managing your team, you can negotiate contracts, set your team's training schedule, even shout orders to the players while they're on the pitch. With a trivia mode with over 1,000 football questions, if you weren't a football expert when you began the game, you certainly will be by the time you've made your virtual team champions. Right, I'm here with GT member Matt. How you doing, Matt? Fine, thank you. Now, I mean, is there anything here to draw new gamers to management sims? I think there definitely is. I'm not a fan of management games. But right. because this one's got a, a 3D mode in it, so once you've done all your decisions, you actually go into the game, you see your football game being played, but they use the FIFA 2003 engine to show the match. So you right. get a really good detailed 3D game. And you're and, a big FIFA fan. Yeah, I love FIFA, and, and that's what makes it so good. And then you get to um, shout orders to them as well. So you're trying to push up, you know, yeah. hold back, that that sort of thing. So you're almost sort of playing it without As play's playing actually it. going on. As play's going on, you can shout from the sidelines. Oh, so nice. it really is a, a, a unique thing that will draw gamers that usually aren't into these sort of games. You know, maybe make them take a look at it. Right. Now, I mean, how deep is it? How deep is the game? I mean, how oh, in depth do they actually go? It's so deep. You can you can look at the finances. You can look at your staff. You can go down to even like how much you charge at the nearest hotel. No way. The stay. Yeah. All the, everything. <laughs> every little decision that affects the way your club forms, you can do in this game. That's really brilliant. detailed. Yeah. Now, I mean, I'm assuming there's a lot of menus and stuff that you have to go through in the there game. Are, yeah. So, I mean, what's it like going through the different menus? And is it confusing? There's loads to navigate. It's not too confusing. What I would say is because it's a, a console the loading times can be a problem. Oh, right, of course. You know, yeah. on a PC, you don't get that problem. This is the PS2 navigate. as well. It's a PS2, and mm. you know, it is one of the slowest loaders of it all the consoles. Indeed. You know, a PC, you can just click around and do what you want, especially when you're um, waiting for the screen to load. It does take a long time. It's a bit annoying. It can be annoying, you know. It's got some good music there to keep up the interest. All right. But, you know, once you've heard the music again and again, yeah, you, yeah, are, yeah. you are waiting a bit. So that's my only guide. I personally like to turn the music down, personally. Yeah, yeah OK. <laughs> right, let's meet our gamer, James. James, how you doing, mate? I'm all right, thanks. No, I mean, obviously, this would be the first time you're playing this. So what's your first impressions of this one, mate? Really good. It's unlike any one I've ever played before. And, I mean, what console do you have at home? PS2. PS2, so you could be running out to the store very soon, mate. Probably. Right, definitely. cheers for that. Now, um, Matt, basically, I mean... Let's talk about, you know, longevity. I mean, how long is this going to keep the gamer occupied? It'll keep you occupied for ages. Obviously, you've got loads of uh, divisions in there. You've got loads of seasons, different cups, tournaments mm. you can play for, training modes for them to do as well. And the interesting thing is this actually works with FIFA 2004. It's got a thing called fusion mode, okay. which means that you can take the team that you're, you're um, nurturing in this game and then play with them into 2004 and then put them back in the game. So no, they're, they're actually say, yeah, That is a really, really nice touch. It really is, yeah. Right, so Matt, give me a G rating, mate. OK, well, it's a solid game, but the loading times are really frustrating. There's a lot of waiting on the loading time, so I'm going to give it four Gs. A good score nonetheless, Very though. Good. Yep. Right, it's official. Total Club Manager 2004 <laughs> on your PS2 gets an official Gamesville. Four Gs. Right, from football management to game management, it's time to get some hints, cheats and tips from the one in charge. Keep on bowing, keep on bowing. You know who's in charge. Who needs me? Alan Bowyer, he writes, a wise guru on brute force on Xbox. How can I get special abilities? Your wisdom is appreciated. Oh, funny eyed one. Oh, funny eyed one. And what is wrong with my eyes, Alan? I do not appreciate your comments. But it is clear that you respect the wisdom, so I will respect your question. Listen. 
create a new profile and put your name as HVY MTL for cartoon mode and SDRAGNT for stupid enemies. Did you catch that, Anna? Or were you too busy looking at my eyes? Next! GameCube, how do I get more tracks in drone races on the PS2 without playing through the game? You see, Saqib, there is a flaw in your plan. How do I get more tracks without playing the game? Do you see the flaw? Why do I bother, Saqib? Why do I waste my breath? Can you answer me that? In which case, I will answer you. At the main menu, enter left, right, left, right, up, down, up, down. Triangle, triangle, X. This will give you what you require, Saqib. Now, it's crazy, but how about actually playing the game? Guru, where were you when I was taking my GCSEs, my A-levels, and my degree for that matter? Oh, now, if you need some expert gaming advice, you need some words of wisdom to get you to that next gaming level, send your emails to guru at gamesville.tv. No doubt. And UK digital satellite viewers out there, if you've missed any of his great wise words, don't worry about it. Just pick up the remote control and simply press your red button. Absolutely, Jay. Now, coming up on the show, we have got something very special for you guys that like to game on the move, because we review a couple of new titles for your mobile phone. And in the PC lounge, we're on the trail of a killer as we investigate a new movie-style thriller of a game is called In Memoriam. So guys, there's only one place for your game in action. We're Gaming! Woo! Tell me specifically what you're interested in having done. Everything. Nobody knows where to draw the line. Liposuction. Collagen. My breasts. Implants. We can't take on every patient who files through our doors. All this perfection comes at a price. Here. us then you are missing some serious basketball action on NBA Jam. Now let me tell you it is already one round to nil to Jamie's boy Luke over here but my boy Josh is playing for the second round. More about that in a second because coming up on the show we'll be finding out who really is king of the ring in our clash of the titles as Knockout Kings tries to outbox Rocky. And inspect your gadget returns with more high-tech gizmos to baffle and amaze your friends. But right now it's time for round two of our face-off! <laughs> Alright guys, pick up your pads. We are playing a 1 minute 30 game and basically it's the one with the most points wins the round. Okay, after the count of 3, 3, 2, 1, let, let the game begin! Go.
it seemed like an eternity for the game to finish there. But um, you were ahead, you did your thing, and your defence was very good. I have to say, this man played a very good D game, very good defensive game. Blocked a lot of shots and then followed up with your own, so you must be feeling great right now. Yep. You are our face-off champion today, mate. But one question, are you going to send him home with a whitewash? Yeah, Absolutely. does that sound good? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you must be confident for round three. Basically, rounds one and two is in the bag. And uh, what can I say, Daz? Well, what can I good? say? I don't know. Josh, unlucky in that round. You led most of the way, but he just stole it towards the end. You are playing for pride in the third and final round. I'm afraid you have lost this face-off, but don't worry about it. It's all about pride, bro. Right, you know what? I can't wait for round three, Jay. We're going to be underway very, very soon. But right now, it's time to check in for some journalistic knowledge from our very own G-Team. Fine, thanks. Good. What's going on? I've got some news about Nintendo. Yep. Uh, what they've basically been saying is that the Game Boy Advance 2 may actually have video playback on it. Video playback? So you can record yeah. your own games? Uh, no, nope. you won't be able to record your own games. What you will be able to do is watch films on it. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay, so, so what are they going to do? Bring out a special little cartridge for that? Or? They've only get sort of hinted at it, so mm. we don't even know what it would be. But it wouldn't it be good if you could buy like a cartridge with a compressed movie on it, instead of like a DVD, and yeah. then just watch it on the move? Oh, it'd be class. It'd be really good, you know, be on the train or whatever, or waiting for a bus. It'd make my journeys a lot more interesting. It certainly would, wouldn't it? Definitely. I now, mean, it's interesting that Nintendo have said this, really, because they've always been a company that have said, game, you know, a games machine is for gaming. Yeah. But they've been burnt in the past, obviously. Yeah, the, totally. game, the GameCube didn't have DVD playback in it. As you know, Xbox and PlayStation 2 did. Nintendo didn't think it would take off. No, times are changing, man. Nintendo, get with, get with the program. Yeah, indeed. So uh, I think they're actually starting to change their tune a bit. They're yeah. starting to think, well, actually, yeah, people do want a machine that does more than just play games. Well, yeah, you know? I mean, consoles in general are becoming more multimedia, so I don't see why handhelds don't follow suit. Indeed. I mean, the PSP is going to be more multimedia. The yeah. Engage already is a bit. That can play, uh, like, has, has a radio component. And obviously, it's a phone as well. Yeah. Phone, yeah, so yeah. I think they're starting to think, hang on a minute, we are starting to be overtaken, so let's yeah, do something about totally. it. Well, good news, Matt. Nice one, bro. How you doing, Si? Hi, mate. What's going on? Well, still staying with Nintendo. Yeah. I've got some news about the current GBA. Okay. And what's going on here? Well, it looks like that we could see Quake Engine type games. Like here, I've got a screenshot of Half Life, you can see. This is powered by the GBA. Yeah. Looks and, pretty good, um, Yeah, it's three dimensional and it doesn't look too bad. Yeah. This is all thanks to a company called Bobby Tech. They've created a new uh, a DRG 3D engine. It sounds very fancy, but yeah, it basically <laughs> it's, it's software that allows the GBA to handle advanced 3D graphics. Okay, so that's why the games are going to look a lot better then. Yeah, this is why we're going to see 3D action games. Brilliant stuff, side. Nice one, mate. Jamie. I tell you what, the stakes are going up and they up are, and up are. in the gaming world. And the stakes are going up and up and up on the freebies desk. Because we've got two more crackers for you. Now we've got a freebie specialist who gives them out. Her name is Sarah. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Now, I'm looking at your screen and I don't know what's going on. Help me out, sir. It's, um, you'll find this game at amg.com. And this is a story about a farm and amg's the little girl there. Okay. And she's running around, she's trying to round up all her animals that have escaped. So you've got a fox, a blue cat, and this little yellow chick that's running around. Um, it's a really nice 3D puzzle game. It's all freeware. And you've basically got to help around them up by moving big blocks to uh, like control where they go. When the animals are running around, if they touch a block, then they'll bounce and start running the other oh, way. Right. And, stuff. and there's also strange things that you've got to collect on the way, like pieces of watermelon and jelly beans. And It's really a game <laughs> for younger gamers, but it's a nice little <laughs> puzzle game. And it's just so it's almost like herding the sheep. In a funny kind of way. Yeah, yeah. But, but they're giant, they're giant creatures that. Cats are and chicks and. The oddest collection of animals, yeah. But it's nice. It's a nice game to play. That's but cool. Free. This one, one for everyone. It's um, a chance to drive the gorilla's jeep. Oh, You'll yeah. find it at gorillas.com, the uh, gorillas website. Okay. And it's, it's, this is another fun one to play. It's a driving game. You're in the jeep. You're controlling it. You're driving along this track. Look at that. It starts off looking like a normal road, but then yeah. it sort of loops the loop and it starts going a bit more scaly. Roller coaster too. style. Yeah, and then you can take it down on the beach and you can drive around. Oh, that's cool. I mean, how are you controlling that? Is all that with a curse. Oh, all yeah. with curses. And Dad, you want to check amazing... this one out, mate? This is one for you. You can go off the road and do some amazing tumbles as well, but you want to kind of land on your feet like a cat and it just carries on. Oh, nice one. So while you're playing this, you've got a really nice soundtrack to listen to as well. And a wicked soundtrack too. So free gaming, soundtracks, I mean, what more do you want? Come on, guys. Now, also, remember, we want to know about your free downloadables. So if you've got any good ones you want us to check out, send them in to Sarah and she'll take it from there, right? That's right. Now, a massive thank you to you as always. You're welcome. Now, moving from freebies to messages. Uh, I've got two here. First one is from Charlotte Hawkins, and she's messaged us with a question for Lucy. Follow me. 
Lucy, this one's for you, sweetie. Um, it's from Charlotte, and she wants to know, what is your favourite game, Lucy? Well, Jamie, there are just so many games out there to choose from, and I've got loads of favourites. But I always love playing Pandemonium on the PS1. Good game. And now you can play it on the Engage, so I'm really happy. And for now, it's, it's definitely my favourite. Favourite game? Charlotte, I hope that answered your question. Right, I've got another one here. It's from Sharif in Birmingham. This is for you, Dad. Uh, he wants to know, what do you think about people who say that playing games is geeky? Nah, don't be silly. No way. Playing games is cool. It's very, very cool. I mean, I mean, obviously, you've got your geeks, but me and Jay, we're not geeks. The G-team, they're not geeks. Playing games is the new cool. Trust me, mate. Well, Jay, it's time for you to get on your way because there's a gadget that needs inspecting. Now, you guys might know Sarah as a freebie specialist, but I bet you didn't know she was a gadget specialist as well. Right, Sarah, now these things have been catching the corner of my eye. What are these all about? These are some really cool stunt races, but I'm going to show you them in a minute because I've got something really special here to show okay. you. This is a digital camera that's smaller than your average credit card or cash card. That's not a camera. It is a camera. It's absolutely amazing. It's a digital camera. What? It also doubles up as a webcam as well. You attach it up to your PC so you can do like your video conferencing yeah. or you know, email <laughs> pictures and stuff through. Um, but this, it's tiny. It actually has so many functions for something so small. Mm. Um, you can have different resolution, obviously, so you can either have low resolution and have lots more photographs. Right. Or if you put it on high resolution, you can have about 25 So photographs. you get less photos for high res, obviously, yeah. and uh, more for the low yeah, yeah, definitely. This is so thin, it doesn't even fit a normal battery. It's got a really, really thin lithium battery that you can recharge. And when you've right. recharged it, it lasts a week. So. I mean, look, can I just... How cool is that? You talk about sleek. I've got to show you these now. These are more of a toy than that one. Right. Um, you're I'm kind excited of about these, like yep. racing remote control cars. These are stunt races. Not your average. Are they ready to go? They should be, yeah. yeah. Try them out. Oh, oh, there you go. <laughs> They've actually got six wheels. These wheels that are all in different directions allow them to do all kinds of different stunts, oh, wheels, right. 360 turns. You've got two wheels up here just in case you capsize, yeah, right? Yeah, they yeah. flip. But I mean, the, your average remote control car is going to be huge and bulky, but these things are pocket sized, so you can take them anywhere with you. Now, I mean, they look quite robust as well. I know they're small and stuff. There's quite a few small pieces on them, but they look quite tough. Yeah, real youngsters yeah. shouldn't have these. There's too many little small parts, but I mean, they're good fun just to. Yeah, mess definitely. around with, yeah. And what's the range like? Can I drive it straight off the retro table Very now? Very fast, yeah? actually. I'll be careful. Right, here we go. Ah! Whoa, there we go. <laughs> it's still going as well. So, two fantastic gadgets. I mean, freebie specialist, gadget specialist, what more do you want from the one and only Sarah? Sarah, thank you very much. You're welcome. Right, guys, it is a psychological affair in the PC lounge today because we are taking a look at In Memoriam. Now, this game puts you in the role of detective, and it's your job to solve a crime. Now, you're going to need a lot of patience, and your puzzle-solving skills are going to be needed in the real and virtual world. Guy, now, I mean, this game does look very amazing. It looks quite strange as well. Mm -hmm. it's, is it a game? Is it a game? It's, well, it's not strictly a game. It's, it's what they're calling an interactive multimedia adventure. Now, explain that to me. Well, basically, when you, when you log on for the first time with this game, you're asked to um, give your email. So you have to have internet access right. and, and an email account mm -hmm. for this game. And um, from then on, basically, uh, using CD-ROM, it communicates with you via email, and it asks you to access certain internet sites, some of which are real, yeah. and some of which have been created by the designers, and you've got to find clues in those internet sites, and strange characters send you emails and tell you where to look. So they've actually like made that. a mock-up website just specifically for this absolutely, game. Absolutely, absolutely, which adds a really sort of eerie, realistic sense. I mean, when you're getting actual emails into your real email yeah, account, totally, yeah. and you're going to real websites, it makes the whole thing seem really realistic. So obviously the emphasis is on the psychology in this game. Absolutely. Do you think it works really well? I think it does. I mean, to be honest, there's a lot of internet sites that have, have started doing this over the years, you know, to sort of publicise films and stuff like that, yeah. sort of adding a sort of real-world element. So it's nothing that new, mm. but the presentation is second to none. Trust me, when you take it home and you turn all your lights off and you shut the curtains <laughs> and, you, and you start playing it on your own, it gets very freaky. It's now, very Earlier, I did hear a couple of screams coming from the PC and <laughs> I was wondering what was going on. <laughs> you sure? Sarah. Yeah, was that you, Sarah? <laughs> yeah, it was actually. So what do you think of this game? Um, it is actually really scary. It's really in-depth. Um, the you get these emails that are sent to you and then you have to, he sends you like loads of riddles and you have to just basically figure them out and they are quite complicated, you have to put things in order and then the more things that you actually do for him, he then sends you more information so you can find um, that you kidnap people. Right, so I mean obviously the atmosphere is like quite dark it and is. eerie, is it very frightening? It is, it's really really tense. Yeah, and you found it quite scary? No I did. Yeah. <laughs> but did you enjoy it? I'm really enjoying it. You have to spend a lot of time on it, though. It's yeah. one of the games where you really do have to get into it. You have to it's be prepared. It's not a pick-up-and-play game, no, is it? No, you do have to really get into it. Great stuff. Thank you, Sarah. 
So, Guy, I mean, is there any favourite features that you've, you've found in this game, or...? Well, I'll tell you, one, one of the features I'm quite impressed with, there's a lot of um, video, yeah. a lot of movie in this. Um, you, you see the journal of the guy who's supposedly been kidnapped. Right. Um, and the acting is really good. You know, we're used in video games and computer games to some really appalling acting. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. But this stuff is top-notch, no. so that, that's a really good feature. So, Guy, this isn't a young, game for younger gamers, is oh, it? No, no, no. It, fr it freaked me out. And you're not scared I'm not, easily, I'm not, Guy. I'm, I'm made of sterner stuff. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, obviously it does look like a, a very innovative, and a, a new type of game. Do you think this type of game is going to take off? Do you think that we can see more of these types of games? I think once the novelty's worn off, probably not. Because mm. to be fair, you know, to put my critical hat on, there's not a whole lot to it. It's all atmosphere, it's style, yeah. really over substance. Over the puzzles themselves are just click with your mouse and try to work out puzzles in your head. Really? So it, it's not a game about, you know, reactions and stuff. It, yeah. It's all logic puzzles, basically. All right, Guy, I'm going to ask you for a G rating. This is a really tough one. I mean, if it was on style and atmosphere alone, it would be a 5G game, but there's just not enough to it. It's a, it's a bit too simple in the puzzle game stakes, so um, I'm going to give it a high, respectable 3Gs. Well, you've heard it from the expert guy and our gamer Sarah. This game, in memoriam, on your PC, gets a Games Rule rating of 3Gs. Well, it's a 3G game, but now it's time to go to a 5G grudge match. It is the third and final round of today's gruelling face-off. We are playing NBA Jam on the PlayStation 2. And just to remind you of what's going on, we've got two gamers who have come here to settle a grudge. Indeed, Daz. Let's find out what the grudge is for those who've just joined us. Luke, what's the problem here, mate? Stealing my lunch every day. Josh, you're stealing your lunch money. You know, you're working hard, you go to get your lunch, and, uh, you know, sandwiches are missing, apples are missing, change is missing. We just can't have this, can we? All right. Now, you're 2 nil up, um, so arguably, you know, you've settled the score already, but to really settle the score, 3-0, three 3-0 nil, three nil sounds sweet, doesn't it? Very. Is that what we're aiming for? Yep. Definitely. Last one, Josh. Can't wait, mate. Oh, all right. Well, this is the third and final round for you, Josh, and you are playing for pride, mate. Guys, this is a 1 minute 30 game. The one with the most points at the end of 1 minute 30 is the round winner. Pick up your pads, gentlemen, and let's get it on. Okay, it's 3, 2, two 1. one. Let, Let the game begin! begin. Fantastic performance. Have a look at your mate Josh over there and just give him a few words about pack lunch in the future. Get your own. Get your own. <laughs> Defended. Well, you know, what can I say? Gamers come with grudges and they settle it in the face-off zone. They do, Jay. Well, I'm lucky. I'm lucky, Josh. You did lose with a whitewash, but that doesn't really reflect on the way you played. You played a very good game and you were very unlucky. Well, we will be coming back, Jay, because you know what? I think he's playing for an elite stamp. He I'm is indeed. Correct. He is indeed. Now, let's find out how he feels about that. Now. You did win, you won three rounds to nil, very good gameplay, but you're going to go head to head with me for an elite stamp on your certificate, mate. How do you feel about that? Pretty confident. You still confident? Yeah, I'm going to beat you. Yeah? Well, you know what, <laughs> Luke is a good gamer. I'm pretty nervous myself, I have to say so that. So you should be, mate, because I would be. But now it's time to go to a man who is the master of knowledge here at Gamesville. And I'll tell you what, he makes me nervous. It's our very own Games Guru.
I am here. I am always here. Who needs me? Jay, he writes Guru. How do I get all the characters and other bikes on Freakstyle on the PS2 without working for them? Laziness is an awful affliction, Jay. You are not prepared to work for your goal. Do you think the guru got to be where he is by sitting around all day, <clears throat> never leaving? Actually, yes, I did. Why should you work for them, Che? The guru will provide. Listen. Enter the password. Wheels to get all of the bikes and populate to get all of the characters. It is done. Now be gone. Next. Guru, the monsters keep catching me on Gauntlet Legends on the N64. Is there any way to run away from them? To sneak and avoid is the way of the Guru. Why get into a conflict when it can be avoided? I know of a trick for Gauntlet Legends. It's a nifty trick. It speeds up your character to stop them being caught. Allow me to enlighten. Enter your name as Purple. Purple. This will give you a super speedy character. The monsters will pose no more threat. Guru, I've said it once, I've said it twice, and I'll say it again, mate. Your knowledge is priceless. If you guys want a piece of the priceless knowledge, you know what to do by now. Send your emails to guru at gamesville.tv. And UK Digital Satellite viewers, we have not forgotten about you because you can also get the Guru's hints, cheats and tips all at the press of your red button. Now, coming up, the Italian stallion Rocky Balboa is warming up for our clash of the titles, but will it be Knockout Kings that delivers the decisive blows? And we pay our respects to a gaming pioneer in the retro zone because we go right back to 1980 to take a look at Tempest. That's all coming up right here on Gamesville. <laughs> But don't worry, we've got loads more to come, including the guru listening to more of your gaming confessions. And in NBA, I'll be taken to the court to make sure our face-off champion gets no elite stamp. That's right, Jay. And Lucy has got her work cut out in the mobile pad because the Terminator and Commando have arrived on your mobile phone. Now, you just saw Simon in training, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you why, because it's time for our clash of the titles. It's time for me and Jay to go head-to-head. -head. Now, we just got a message, an email, in fact, from Sarah in Leicester, and she wants to know, which is the best boxing game? Is it Rocky or is it Knockout Kings? Well, Sarah, you're about to find out because I'm playing Rocky and I've got Knockout Kings on the cube. <laughs> Lace up your gloves, climb between the ropes and get ready to stand toe to toe with some of the best boxers of all time. Knockout Kings 2003 brings the power, speed and intensity of professional boxing to your fingertips, my man. And check out the list of boxers. Are you ready? Go on. Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier, Roberto so Duran, Sugar Ray Leonard, Felix Trinidad, and Lennox Lewis, and many, many more, which I'm not even going to mention now. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Give yourself a chance and carry well, on, mate. Jay, let me tell you that Rocky is a game that was long overdue. I mean, recreating the five Rocky films, tracing the life of Rocky Balboa, a.k.a. the Italian Stallion. And here's a bit of history for you. The original Rocky film starred Sylvester Stallone and earned an Academy Award for Best Picture in 1976. And this game brings the feel-good factor flooding back. There are 30 different fighters taken from all five of the Rocky films, including Clubber Lang, Apollo Creed, Ivan Drago, and remember this guy, Tommy Gunn. 
to hear about films. I want to know about gameplay. Let me tell you some more about my game. The single player career mode lets you build a boxer from scratch. Yes, scratch. Manage him and turn him into a wrecking machine. Just like me. <laughs> you make me laugh, mate. That was funny. Well, in my game, I mean, the realism, it takes realism to another level. You've got cuts, bruises, and swelling. You've even got abrasions which, which form realistically on fighters' faces as the match progresses. And I've got to tell you, Jay, I just love this game. Rocky Balboa, for me, is the top man. But, G-Team, what's your verdict? Well, you, as you guys know, it's, it's been a long, hard road to come to this decision. But, you know, it's realism over, over the guy that we all love. And... Uh, it's got to be the guy we all know. I mean, five Rocky characters. Oh. Adrian! Yeah! <laughs> I'm here, Clash of the Titans! <laughs> and I'm so happy! Just like to say a huge thanks to Sarah for the message. People, you want to send some games on Clash of the Titans? You don't know which game's best? Send them in and we'll sort it out for you. That's right, simple as that. Well now, done, mate. Do you know what? What's I think that? it's time for some mobile gaming, Jack. Let's get to it, mate. I am back in the mobile pad because I am looking at Terminator and Commando on the mobile phone. How was that impression, Luce? It was very good, actually, Dad. It's all right, Luce, you don't have to lie. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're looking at some Terminator and Commando. Now, we I mean, uh, I know that Terminator was definitely based on the film, uh, starred Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Now, how does it transfer to the mobile <laughs> phone? Now, basically, all you've got to do is you've got all these baddie Terminators coming across the screen, and they, they appear in kind of nine different boxes, really. Yeah. And depending which box they appear in, you've got to shoot. So they correspond with the, the numbers, the numbers, on, your numbers mobile phone. on the mobile phone. Um, it starts off really easy because the numbers actually pop up on the screen and then after the level two I think they, they disappear so it gets a little bit more hectic and difficult. It's although really easy game, it's strangely compelling. Ooh, well, we've got a game of Bradley over here. Bradley, what's your first impressions of Terminator on the mobile? Yeah, it's not a bad game. Yeah? Right, yeah. Five minutes or one hour? Um, yeah, about an hour. Yeah? Suppose, yeah Pretty good? Yeah, All right, be. great stuff, mate. So, Lucy, last but not least, <laughs> I'm going to ask you for a G rating. Well, do you know what? I was going to give it two Gs, but because he said he's going to play it for an hour, <laughs> I think you've got to get at least three. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? All right, well, you've heard it from Luce. Terminator on your mobile phone gets a games all rating of three Gs. Now, we've also got another game, which is Commando. Tell Absolutely. me a little bit about this one, Luce. Now, Commando is, a, is another big man's game. Yeah. <laughs> you play the Commando, and just like in the old arcade, it's, it's actually very similar to the original arcade game, yeah. Commando. Um, and you've got to go up the screen, shooting all of the enemies. Because it was a top-down view, enemies. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's something that, and you just go, and it's, well, it doesn't actually scroll up the screen whereas the arcade version did, you've got to clear the screen, screen by screen, level by level. Right. Is this um, a little bit harder than Terminator? It, it is a little... It, well, it's just different. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, the gameplay is different. Right, yeah. Miles, what's your first impressions of Commando? Uh, Commando was actually a pretty good game. I was, wasn't too chuffed when I first saw it. But, <laughs> yeah. But you've grown to enjoy it. Yeah, I have. Yeah, it's one of those games you can find yourself getting into. Yeah, definitely. I, oh, like, right. I like the grenades in the game. Oh, yeah? yeah Wicked. All right, great yeah. stuff. So, um, <laughs> Lucy, what's your G rating for Commando? Well, do you know what? Commando's going to get three Gs, too. Three Gs, too? Yeah. All right, well, both games have done pretty well in the mobile pad today. You've heard it from Luce. Commando also gets a games all rating of three Gs. Now, I can see Jamie sitting with Matt, so that must mean it's time to get retro. Cheers, Dad. Now, I am with me mate Matt on the retro table, and people don't know about Matt. This man's a retro specialist. Look at this sweatband. I mean, how retro do you want it? Come on. How you doing, Matt? Sorry, I got carried away with my nah, sweatband. That's totally understandable, mate. Uh, okay, we're looking at uh, Tempest, a uh, 1980 game in the arcade. I've never even heard of it. Yeah, What's not to be confu confused with The Tempest, which is the William Shakespeare. Of course. Right, supernatural being who stormed mm -hmm. the thing. Right, this was um, all these monsters basically coming out of a tunnel. Okay. At you. All right, it's like some bizarre nightmare, which apparently the creator, this is where, where, how he got the idea for the game. You're this crab-shaped creature on the outside. Yeah. It's sort of like a sort of spider's web, and you're on the outside shooting at these things that are coming out at you, trying to shoot them back down. So you're you running around there. the outside, yeah, trying to stop them getting to the edge? Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. And, and it, ooh, it was nasty when they got to the edge. Because they'd on, chase on. you around the edge and they'd get you. And what, and what would happen then? You'd be gone. You'd, you'd, lose, be gone. A life, you'd lose a life, and so, you have to start again. So if they got to the edge, that was it? It was game over? It wasn't game over, because you did have a lifeline. You had this uh, special thing, you could zap everything on the, on, on the web. I mean, Matt, I'm looking at this game now and it looks kind of weird. I mean, tell me about the it graphics. Is, it is weird, yeah. Simple vector graphics. So never have a spiky blob look so scary as it, <laughs> as it comes towards you from the middle of the screen. So, Matt, tell me, I mean, like I said, I haven't actually played this one yet, so is it worth me kicking you off the table later and getting stuck in? I think it is, yeah. I think um, it's difficult enough to challenge you, mm -hmm. even you, Jamie. Even me? You. Yeah, sure. and, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> and it's got, it's got a one more go factory, you know. It, it is difficult, but yeah, it just keeps coming back. Well, that's what all good retro games are about, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Thanks for educating the nation once again, mate. Now it's time to go from the eye of the storm to the weird eyes of the guru. Let's check it out. Ask the guru. What is it with my eyes? 
I am here for knowledge, not modeling. Who wishes to ask the guru? Pokemon Gaza does. He gets his chance, he writes, Hi guru, you're my idol. Wise choice. Are there going to be any Zoid games coming out in the UK? Zoids. I have seen such things in Japan. On the GBA and GameCube. However, there is no plan for a UK release. If there is a problem, Pokemon Gaza, you must think around it. I suggest you try Mech Assault on the Xbox. Mech Assault, yes. That should quench your thirst for large battling robots. Next. Codemasters Colin McRae Rally 04 is great, but what is the first game they ever made? Jenny Stedman. A strange question, Jenny, but one I will endeavor to answer nonetheless. Codemasters have been making games for 16 years, including, as you mentioned, the Colin McRae series. However, their first game was way back in 1987 on the old 8-bit home computers. It was called the NX Simulator. You played a little like Super Sprint. You had to do three laps of a dirt track. I trust you are suitably enlightened, Jenny. <laughs> the big one this is the one we've all been waiting for because it's time for our face off champion of champions finale now if you just joined us let me fill you in on the action we've got luke over here he is today's face off champion he beat his mate josh three rounds to nil you know what that is that's called a whitewash here at games Raw. this is the elite final it doesn't get any tougher than this all right pick up your pads gentlemen after the count of three three two one let the games begin Championship, and we do have a face off champion. His name is Luke, and Luke, you did it in style, mate. I've got to say, and this belongs to you. How does that feel? You won that Games of Elite. Feels amazing. Yeah? So, I mean, you know, how do you feel beating, beating Jamie? Because he's pretty good, isn't he? He was good. Yeah? He blocked you... quite a lot of my Yeah, it was a very defensive game that you two played, actually, but you just came out on top. Well done, mate. Excellent stuff. Jamie, well done. Shake hands, guys. Well done. Give these guys a hand. Yeah. Okay, well. That is the end of the show, and what a show it's been. But UK Digital Satellite viewers, don't worry, because the fun doesn't stop for you. No way. Because you can get involved in competitions. You can send me, Jay, the Guru, the G-Team, anyone a message. And guess what else? You can even play games all at the touch of a red button. Now, it will cost you 25p, so please ask the bill payer for permission first, because we don't want you to get in trouble. Exactly. Now, as Dad said, that's all we got time for. But if you want the very, very best in hardcore gaming action, there's only one place to come, and it's right here on Games Game